Hey guys, how you doing today? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks for joining me today and thanks for painting. Uh, today's video, we're actually painting my friend's dog. His name is Bobby and he's really, really sweet. Um, but with this painting, we get a lot of practice with some of our long flowy brush strokes um, because he's such a long haired dog. Uh, so it's gonna be really a lot of fun for you. With all my videos, feel free to switch out colors if you want. If you wanna do shades of dark gray to make them more black and white, or if you wanna um, add a little bit of red to your uh, browns to make it a little bit more red, or some yellow to make them a little more blonde, um, you can add those. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will reply with um, how you can kinda of change the colors. With this video and all the videos that I produce, in the links below you have a link to a supply kit. And the supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting, your colors, your brushes, your surface. And again, it helps you kind of know what you need to gather before you start painting. So check that out. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable and where to acquire those traceables. And with a traceable, it's a nice way for beginner and first time painters to get that initial composition on the canvas before you even start painting. So it takes out some of that beginning stress. So again, check out where to acquire your traceable. And then I have another video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas. So check those out before, so you can do your prep work before you start painting. With this painting and any painting that you do, I want you to relax. I don't want you to take yourself really seriously. I want you to have fun with this. You have permission to change colors. You have permission to color outside the lines. You have permission to do something entirely different, but just paint. So enough talking. Um, I'm sure you're ready to get started painting, so let's get going. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you're ready to paint today. This is going to be a cute little Yorkie mix. His name is Bobby. It's a friend of mine's dog. So head on over to where you have your setup. Turn on your favorite music. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. And after you've transferred your traceable to your canvas or your panel, you're going to take your small pointy brush and black paint. And I want you to go over all those outlines. And again, I want you to just do this as practice. These lines don't have to be perfect. You will find that maybe some of your lines are thinner, some are thicker, some can, you can see the canvas shining through. I just want you to get practice and comfort with the, these longer brush strokes that we're gonna be making today. So play with that pressure right now. We're gonna redo these steps um, these outlines at the end of the painting. So again, right now, this is just practice for you to get comfortable with the pressure of your brush. You can always reference your traceable to see exactly where those lines go. And when you get to the eyes, you'll notice that I actually fill in the pupil, um, that black spot on the center of the eye. And again, reference your traceable for that. If you happen to go over that little white dot, that white catch light, we can reapply that at the end of the painting. Basically, don't stress about too much today. Just the fact that you're sitting down and actually painting, that's half the battle. It takes a lot of courage to get to where you're at right now, so you're already successful. All right, if you're one of my first time painters, take a deep breath for me right now because you probably don't realize it, but you are holding your breath. Um, it's a good point to even just kind of laugh at yourself a little bit. It's okay. We don't have to take this so seriously. It's just painting. And the main goal is for you to be more relaxed at the end of your painting than you were before you started. And it's okay if you're a little stressed out about portions of your painting. That is part of the process. But just keep painting. All right, so pause the video. Take your progress photo. And we're going to move into painting our background. So I'm going to take that yellow paint with a little bit of raw sienna. It's actually kind of like a brown mustard color as you mix those together. 
and I'm using kind of a medium or larger flat brush. If you only have your small flat brush, feel free to use that one. Um, the larger one just covers more area. And again, we're going to be filling up the entire background. And if you are again a beginner, first time painter, as you're applying your background with these student grade paints, I want you to apply your paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with. I want you to think about buttering your toast or icing your cake. I want you to pick up enough pigment that when you move your brush back and forth on the canvas, your brush glides back and forth because there's enough paint. Um, if you can see the texture of your, your canvas showing through, use more paint. You can add a touch of water to your paint, but you never want your brush dripping wet with water. And when you apply your paint a little bit thicker, it's easier to do some of our blending because it doesn't dry as quick compared to when you apply your paint on the thinner side. Again, no right or wrong way, just kind of giving some suggestions as you are going through your beginning stages of painting. And as you come up close to our Yorkie mix here, and if you overlap some of the black lines, again, totally okay, because we will be reapplying those at the end of the painting. All right, so now I'm actually just grabbing that raw sienna by itself and painting right on top of the background. This is called a wet on wet blending method. Because your background color is already wet and we're introducing a new color on top of it, you're blending wet paint into wet paint. And it literally is exactly what you do on your canvas to mix your color, or on your palette to mix your colors, but we're just doing it on your canvas instead. And you can introduce other colors. It doesn't have to be raw sienna. If you wanna put um, some of your purple in there or your raw umber or uh, burnt sienna, or like I'm doing at the top of the canvas, some white, feel free to do that. And as I'm adding the white, you can see that I kind of throw it chunky, and then I'm not using a whole lot of pressure as I move my brush back and forth, because you'll notice that the lighter colors get eaten up into the background colors a lot quicker. So if you end up adding the white in your background and you lose that contrast quickly because you moved your brush quite a bit, just reapply the white, move your brush on top of it, but not as much as you did the first time. And even here you can see where I'm just using just the tip of the brush and kind of a wide kind of flick of my wrist just to blend and soften some of those edges. If you want to try finger painting, go ahead and do that. You can use your fingers to blend the colors. Just have fun. All right, pause the video and take your progress photos. And we're going to be moving into the shades of our Yorkie's fur. And we are going to be starting with our darkest shades first and working backwards. And we will be applying our colors um, twice. We're going to do two layers on this painting. So I'm using the small flat brush, taking some of that raw umber and burnt sienna and mixing the two. So we're going for a little bit of a darker burnt sienna. And again, we're kind of keeping some bit longer brush strokes since our Yorkie has such this long, beautiful hair. And again, my student grade paint is a little bit more on the transparent side. So again, I encourage you to apply your paint thicker if you are using student grade paints. With the small flat brush, especially with these long, kind of curvy, uh, wavy hair that our dog has. I am using that brush kind of sideways, so that way it holds a little bit more paint and I can make those long tendrils, those long, beautiful overlapping hairlines that this dog will have. And we'll be using this particular brush stroke uh, quite a bit today. So if you are a first time painter, or kind of new to my videos, I do encourage you to utilize the pause section of these videos. And when you pause the video, I want you to observe the placement that I put the, that I put the last color with and the shapes that those uh, that that placement made. And I want you to do your best just to kind of mimic that placement. If you make some of your spaces larger or smaller than what I make, that's okay. It's part of your learning process as you paint. 
If you're inclined to put some of those colors in a place that I don't, go right ahead and do that. Because again, that's part of your learning process. I tell my students that the only way you can fail at painting is to not paint at all. Just the fact that you are attempting this steps ahead of so many people who have talked themselves out of this process. And you're doing a good job. Stick with it, do the whole painting. Don't leave it half finished. At least go through the whole thing and then decide if you wanna do another one or not. But don't quit halfway through. So again, we're still working with our darkest shades first, and we will be doing two layers on this painting of our colors. So once we fill in all that canvas space with our shades, we're actually going to repeat these steps again to um, give us more opaque coverage and to kind of increase our depth. And here, as we kind of get towards the edges, you can overlap your background um, or any of the other spaces. So pause the video, take your progress photo, and next we're going to be moving just right into that burnt umber, the straight burnt umber. It's kind of a reddish brown. It happens to be one of my favorite brown colors. I think just because it's got the red hue into it, it's just a warmer brown. And again, this may look very similar to the color you were just applying. Um, so if you need to adjust your burnt sienna to be a little bit lighter, you can add some raw sienna into it. Or just stick with that burnt sienna and then we'll be moving into our next lighter color in the next step. So again, if you don't have a huge distinction between your first color and this color, that's okay. Just keep painting and filling in the space as it's going. Take a deep breath. You may not have realized you were holding your breath. Relax. And again, as we chisel away this white space, it's amazing how the dog starts to come together. And it's nice because I like telling my students that you are magicians when you come to painting class. You create the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. So that's always kind of nice. Alright, so now we're going to be mixing some raw sienna with our burnt sienna. Again, just kind of stepping down from our dark shades into our light shades. If this is not enough of a step down to where you're still seeing all three of your shades kind of blend together, I want you to just use that raw sienna by itself. Don't add any of the burnt sienna. So we do want to have a bit of a distinction from our first two shades of the dark colors to this shade, which is kind of our main all over color. If you would like to switch the color um, of your Yorkie, if you want to paint a black Yorkie or a light uh, gray or white Yorkie, you can switch out any of these shades of brown um, with shades of dark gray for a black Yorkie or shades of very light gray for a white dog. Again, I encourage you to switch them out. You can even go crazy colors. If you want to use purple instead of the burnt sienna and blue instead of raw sienna, feel free to switch those out. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And now we're actually going to be using the raw sienna just by itself. If in your last step you were using the raw sienna by itself already, then I want you to add a touch of white to yours and go a little bit lighter raw sienna than what you were just using. And here you'll see that I do overlap some of the areas of the prior colors to kind of fill in some of the space um, of the white canvas that may still be shining through. And as you can see on here, with the student grade paints, we do have a lot of the canvas space shining through and certain um, different saturations of our color. 
we are going to be repeating all of these colors um, soon <laughs> after we fill in the space and again that creates more opaqueness and more depth as we chisel away our little Yorkie here all right you guys are doing good I hope you're more relaxed now than you were when you started the painting and if you are stressed out about the painting that is about the only appropriate stress to deal with right now forget about work forget about friends and family forget about traffic focus only on your painting all right so you're going to clean your brush really good we're going to pause the video take a progress photo now we're going to make a light gray for some of the shades on the white part of the fur of our Yorkie, which is kind of have a um, kind of a white grayish nose and chest. So we're going to be adding those. And if you think about it, um, if we just put white paint on here, we would have no definition. So by using a light gray, we are creating the illusion of space, the illusion of a shadow on our flat object. All right, doing good. And if you are kind of on the speedy side of painting and you moved right in from your shades of brown and your paint is still wet, do be careful as you are applying this light gray and even the next step of the white on top of the wet brown paint. So if you need to, you can let your painting dry before you move into the light gray and the white. There we go. So getting a little bit kind of in between his eyes, kind of, yeah, he's got a little uh, stripe shooting up his forehead. If you have a particular Yorkie in mind and it's got distinct marks or colors in a certain area, feel free to kind of switch out this painting to kind of match the dog you might be thinking of. All right, so taking that burnt sienna, Added just a touch of black, just to go a little bit darker. And we're going to fill in the eyes. Again, this is your painting. If you want to switch out the eye color, feel free to do that. If you want a blue-eyed Yorkie, or you could even use the raw sienna if you want a light brown eyes. All right. And we are what we call the underpainting. All the canvas space is covered with paint. And now we will be putting a second layer of all our colors on top of this. And for me personally, I don't actually feel like I have begun my painting until I've gotten to the underpainting. And then I get to start layering colors. Because again, it's amazing. Go back to those progress pictures and see how much difference the white space of the canvas affects our interpretation. And right now I'm actually just taking that raw sienna, filling in any spaces of the white canvas that I can still see. So feel free to do that on your painting. Now pause the video, take your progress picture. We're going to take burnt sienna with a little bit of black. We are going darker. And I've got the small pointy brush and we're going to go back and reapply our shadows on top of the layers of paint we already did. And it's gonna feel kind of funky at first, almost too much. Keep painting. We're gonna be adding other colors and just intensifying our volume, our contrast on our Yorkie. If you need to add a touch of water to your mixture to kind of help with the flow with your brush, feel free to add a little bit of water, but again, you never want your brush dripping wet. And as we're using that small pointy brush, you can kind of play with the pressure. And again, we're making kind of those longer brush strokes since this is such a fluffy and kind of wavy haired terrier. And if you need to make your shade of your burnt sienna and your black mixture a few times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. There are natural variations in everything in life. 
And if you happen to have a little bit on your canvas with the color, that's okay. Just adds more intrigue to your painting. So by taking the shadow and going around the eyes and kind of intensifying, intensifying those dark spaces, when we do some of our final steps with the lighter colors, you'll be amazed at how much it pops. And again, I want you to utilize the pause section of this and use your power of observation to look at the place where I'm putting these colors, the direction that the brush strokes are kind of going, and the general area of just kind of where it's at. And then you get to apply that to your canvas. So you're doing a good job. Keep going. And this is another reason why the progress pictures are actually so important because there are going to be awkward stages. Like right now, this looks a little weird with these crazy dark abstract shadows that are on our dog. And a lot of people would be kind of inclined to throw the painting away, uh, not want to work it on anymore because it looks awkward. You do actually have to realize that that's part of the painting process. There are awkward stages that our paintings go through and literally in the last probably 10% of the painting when we put major highlights on and kind of bring it all together, it's amazing how much better it looks after those last little adjustments at the end. So right now you're doing all the hard work, you're putting the foundation in, building the structure, and then we'll bring it all together with some of our highlights. So keep painting. Keep taking your deep breaths and relaxing. Like I said, the only appropriate stress I want you dealing with right now is the stress of the painting. Alright, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to be moving into our burnt sienna, applying our second layer. Still using that small pointy brush. And again, we're going over some of the places where we already put this. And because it's got that first layer on there, this is sitting more opaque on top of the other paint compared to on top of the canvas, the white of the canvas. And again, you're moving your brush in the direction that the fur is growing or that the fur is kind of wavy in. It helps build that volume, build that um, direction, that energy, wherever the hair is moving to. And again, play with that pressure of your brush. Uh, for my first time painters and beginner painters, if you're finding that your brush is getting kind of uh, globbed up and gunky, feel free to wipe your brush off every now and then and that's going to bring the bristles back together. And by bringing those bristles back together, it will help you make some of those smaller lines. But again, don't get frustrated with yourself. Keep painting. Your muscles are remembering the way you're holding the brush, how it's applying. You are building a lot of knowledge right now as you're painting. And the more that you paint, the more that knowledge is gonna kind of compound on itself and you will see improvements. You will get better. You will get more relaxed with the process. So much of painting is learning to be kind to yourself as you go through the awkward stages of these, of this growth of the painting. Alright, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to be moving down our shades and we're going to be using raw sienna. And again, I want you to apply your raw sienna kind of thick. So that way it covers and it almost matches the thickness that we were applying the last two colors with. Again, moving your brush in the direction that the fur is going. And you can overlap some of these darker shades that we already put on there. Okay. 
right, you're doing good. This little guy's coming along nicely. All right, and it's actually kind of cool that when we do see this um, raw sienna right on top of some of those darker colors, pretty cool how it's making those eyebrows kind of pop out and even that mustache area. Um, again, why the progress pictures are so important because colors make such a difference um, based on where they're placed, the direction that they are applied in, and it's just... It's nice to have a visual documentation of what you have accomplished. And I want you to keep your progress photos. And in a year from now, two years from now, I want you to go back and look at your pictures from your first couple of paintings. Because again, I want you to look at them and go, wow, I have learned so much. I have come so far. And that's such a great feeling to have, to know that you set out potentially rather scared and nervous onto a path of something you wanted to achieve and over a matter of time you saw that you achieved it and again that visual documentation is such a humbling way to experience that um, at different phases in your life because we do need to be reminded of the things that we accomplish especially when they scare us because after you try something you realize it's not as scary as you first thought it to be. And that's why I tell all my students, don't take this process too seriously. This is meant to just be fun. We're not here for perfection. Each person on this planet has a different definition of perfection. And I say we're all perfectly imperfect. <laughs> all right so you should have some nice thickness some nice volume to your painting aside from the places where we have the light gray and the white we will be adding more to that all right so now we're going to move to black paint and we're going to kind of redo those outlines set those eyeballs back into their eye socket and again, a light brush, light pressure for this part. You can use your pointy brush or even your liner brush. And we will fill in the pupil of the eye. And if you happen to paint over that white dot in that pupil, don't stress, we will reapply that. And I just did it there. So we will be reapplying that catch light. And I think I'm going to take that one out too, just so we can apply them both at the same time, the same thickness. And even just take a look at that. Notice how much not having that catch light in there anymore kind of makes our eyes look vacant, it looks hollow. Adding some black to where those nostrils are. Keep going. We're in the kind of the home stretch of the painting. We've got a few more simple but kind of important steps that we'll be doing next. All right, so now we're going to take white paint. We're going to reapply those catch lights. And this is just going to be a dot that goes on top of that black pupil. And again, you can reference your traceable as to where that placement is. And then now I'm actually adding just kind of an extra little highlight on the outside of the eyes. And that just helps draw more attention to the eyes. You can skip that particular step if you like. But again, I like how it makes you focus on the eyes more. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. All right, so back to that white paint, small pointy brush. And now we're gonna start using that pure white paint. And again, we're using just a mild pressure on the brush and we're gonna start putting those hair lines, pure white hair lines 
over the nose and around the eyes and in a few kind of places where the black and the brown meet. And again, I'm kind of moving the brush in the direction that the fur is going. So generally kind of above the nose, you usually have that fur that kind of overlaps where the eyes are. And it's, I'm starting almost as if my brush is touching the dog where the hair would attach to the dog and then flicking my wrist out in the direction that the hair would go. Again, this will get better and more comfortable the more that you practice. And on a side note, um, I would recommend letting all your colors dry before you do this with the white. So that way, when you put the white over the brown, it's not going to pick up some of that color and change your shade. So if you did not let your paint dry, just go take a break for 10 or 15 minutes and then come back and pick up the video where you left off with these white strokes. And again, by kind of moving that brush in the direction that the hair moves and leaving some of those kind of um, spiky little tips or fluffy little edges, again, just kind of helps break up the space of the color and allow our eye to kind of move over this um, 2D surface, but 3D object. And you may notice that um, you kind of get into a groove and you forget to put more white paint on your canvas or on your brush. So I recommend after every two or three brush strokes, grab more white paint again you'll get into that groove but you're not actually applying anything on top of the canvas those are kind of empty brush strokes sometimes and if you need to apply this very thick go right ahead and do that and then again remember get out of your chair walk to the edge of the room and look at your painting from a distance you may think you're putting the white on pretty thick but then when you step back you may realize that it's not thick enough, so feel free to go back and add more. And as we do the hair that's kind of on the edges, I am overlapping the background, um, overlapping some of the other colors. So keep with that, that fluff moving in the direction of the fur. And breathe. You may not realize it, but you're holding your brush, your breath with all these tiny little brush strokes. Relax. And then a bit of a disclaimer I give all my classes. Um, when you're done kind of painting this, I want you to put it on the wall and don't look at it until tomorrow morning. Because, you know, at this point, you may be an hour or two or three hours into this painting. And your brain is actually remembering how much work you have put into this blank white canvas. And our brains don't really want to be kind to us. So again, um, put it away, look at it tomorrow, and you will see it with kind of fresh eyes. Just the final piece. And you should be very proud of yourself. So here I've actually moved into a very light raw sienna. So I started adding a touch of raw sienna to my white. And again, just kind of going for one more lighter brown shade on top of the fur. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really good. I hope you're happy with them. Um, I encourage you to do this painting multiple times. You will get better and more comfortable the more that you do this. So don't stop painting. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me. I like to see your guys' progress. And tag me at paint with lovejoy or hashtag paint with lovejoy so that way I can find them. Um, but please share that with me. I like to see how you're evolving. I like to see maybe things that I might need to adjust to explain things better for you. Um, so yeah, let me know how you're doing. 
With that being said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. And please leave comments, feedback, suggestions, um, things that you found frustrating or difficult in the painting process so that way I can create videos and better help you as you paint at home. Um, anything that you want me to paint in the future, subject matter wise, again, let me know, leave a comment um, because you help me kind of direct where this channel is going. All right, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to paint with me and spend some time. I do hope that you continue this and I hope that you are seeing some of the benefits of having a creative outlet in your life. So until next time, happy painting. Cheers. We're gonna wait for the plane and pick it up with traceables. We're going to wait for the plane. Again, my studio is in Liberty Station, right next to the airport, so we have this to deal with regularly.